And now it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock God Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, do we have a great show for you today. Captain Jimmy Kingsmill is going to be in the studio with us from gyropros.com and gyrobinos.com. We're going to be talking all about gyro binoculars and some great fishing. We always have fun talking about fresh info right off the boat. Well, that's exactly what's happening with Jimmy literally from Mag Bay last night. we got tons to talk about. There's local fishing, offshore fishing, long-range fishing, and more. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. This is Let's Talk Hookup on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85 foot Liberty has become a favorite among full day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half day, full, or one to three day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619 619- 221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150. Available with a pro-power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150. Test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. But it was. All right. Good morning. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, all these stories coming out of this guy, Rick, are <laughs> insane. Yeah, well, <laughs> having Captain Jim Kingsmill in here going to be a super good time. And, uh, Jimmy, we're really excited to have you, man. Thanks for coming in. I, uh, I, I didn't know that, you know, Pete had said, hey, you know, Jim was planning on coming in a couple weeks from now, and we, we were really excited for that. And then, hey, you know, th- things moved around. He's coming in uh, coming in this weekend. We were, oh, great, right on. You know, I can't wait to talk to him. I had no idea that that meant that you were going to be on the plane the evening before back from, uh, you know, a couple of weeks fishing down Mag Bay, having a great trip. Man, thanks for making that happen. Today's going to be rad. Right on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, we're super pumped, uh, super pumped to have you. And, man, what a couple of weeks you've been having the last couple of uh, minutes you've been hanging out talking with Corey and I and then you've been having uh, some fun fishing this has been a, a really cool week for you guys on the beautiful boat that you're running and been having some fun fishing no it was great we had beautiful weather beautiful fishing um yeah, you can't complain. No drama. <laughs> That's no drama great. is good. Um, so uh, you, you know, you now. I mean, obviously everybody knows. You know, everybody knows Captain Jim and and GyroPros dot com and GyroBinos dot com. And you know, you're you're the world's expert on <laughs> gyro binoculars when it comes to fishing. And you may be the humble guy to laugh that off, but it's not. I mean, your name is synonymous with it, and you're who we get them from. And everybody that's got questions about it, every you know, in every circle, everybody. Holds We'll ask Jimmy, see what he thinks, and and uh, you know, and talk about a, a a great tool to have. I mean, it's 
it's probably the number one fish finding device that we have on the West Coast. A, a great tool. It's like the tool, right? I mean, yeah, no, I mean, only what to compete with what an Omni sonar for a hundred grand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, there's. They are they are an investment for sure. It's not a cheap piece of gear, but you know, for the duty that they give you over the lifetime of use and and what they do for you as a tool, there is it's probably the cheapest thing you can do. Like there's like you said, sh- short of a multi hundred thousand dollar sonar, which, which still is is an effect you know is a super effective tool. But I guarantee you, you will find more fish still with a pair of gyros than you will oh, than absolutely. you will with your Omni. Absolutely. Yeah, no, but the thing is, is that you use it for every application. Totally. I uh, I took my skiff this year to uh, Pyramid Lake, trout fishing, and you would be surprised. There's bird schools and there's fish boiling acrylic across the lake. The lake's 20 miles long, and you're like, oh, there's a spot there. Let's go. That's wow. awesome. And you're there, and you throw your fly, you got them on. Or, or, or whatever it else it is, it's or it's weather, or it's a, a a spot on the road, or it's a car, or it's a log, or whatever else. Like anything, anything. Like you know, if uh, you know that. Oh man, that guy hooked one over there. You know, I mean, you 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 can see anything. You can see a boat on the horizon. You can pick up your you know your Frasers, and you can see what you know. You can see what T-shirt that guy's wearing. Like if Pretty it's much. a do, if it's a dot on the horizon, you can pull those up and be like, oh man, that guy's wearing an AFCO shirt. You yeah, I, ha- I have some of the East Coast guys. That- They'll be looking at the dredges like the guy will pull the dredge out of the water. The guy's getting bit all the time. Sure. Because I want to see the color of his dredge. Stuff like that is invaluable yeah. to these guys. And they're like, hey, change the dredge. <laughs> So-and-so is killing it over there. And they switch it out, and there you go. You know, and you just think that when, when you're looking for fish, you know, you're – in your eyeballs, you know, you have an effective range of a few hundred yards, maybe a mile. You know, at the, at the if it's a, if it's a real big target, you know, like a like a real big target, and and really, really not that. You know, you pick these things up, and you're literally seeing small things like a bird, a bird that's the size of a football from from mi- from two miles away. Like what you can see. The you know the dot that you cover now is just it's tenfold bigger. You just don't miss you don't miss things that you just would have driven by without them. No, absolutely. Yeah, some of the the biggest things I see here is like uh, shearwaters and seeing which way they're flying. If you're a tuna guy and you can't see which way the whole school of shearwaters is flying, you you don't know which way to drive. Sure. And it's like oh, all the birds are flying southeast. So let's go. And you bump into stuff when you get there. And just, uh, you know, be, being that you can now have a steady picture and see things so well, you, you can not only see the birds, but you can see what they're doing and see, you know, it, and and their characteristics tell you so much of things. Now, you can tell when that thing is shopping and he's on fish and he's twitchy and he's grabbing bait or, or a bird that's just searching and looking. And you can, you know, you can be two miles away from something and while you're approaching know exactly what's going on. On, or at least at least start to paint the picture of exactly what's going on. Yeah, no, absolutely. To like this, just this past week, we're at the potato bank and it's just corroded with Dorado and and boy, you go to the wrong bird school and <clears throat> your stuff's covered up pretty bad and tore up and your skirts are pants and it's bad. I mean, really bad. And and you'd you'd hear some of the East Coast guys talking and they're using their radar for bird schools and stuff. But there was, you know, 10 bird schools around you, and which one do you go to, and which one's Marlin, and which one's Dorado, and we could tell the difference, you know, from miles away. You were talking about during the before the show started. You said your fishing was unbelievable uh, that you had in your in your whole you know, your whole trip south, but that there was so much Dorado and so much other stuff that if you you know and, and you you know if you had guys that were wanting to to catch Marlin that. The majority of spots were full of Dorado, and you really had to find the right one. And you know, and and the, because of having those, you were able to to physically see the difference. You'd see the Dorado coming out of the water, or you'd see the marlin dorsals coming out of the water. Like you absolutely, could, you could pick them apart from miles away. Absolutely, yeah. You could see spots that are just straight Dorado, spots that are mixed Dorado and marlin, and then spots that are just straight marlin. And we had to kind of cull it out by the afternoon and and when it was by the t- afternoon came you're just straight marlin and that's all everybody wanted because the Toronto were a train wreck that's it so was cool unbelievable. the fishing was too good 
I've never seen so many Dorado. Really? You think it had anything to do with last year's you like know, SoCal? How hey, could deal? how could Jimmy of right? how, of of of, I, of Orange County, California, after last year, say the words I've never seen so much Dorado? It was. Um, and they were bigger. You know. it was a, <laughs> How is that possible? Was big. I mean, if it's the same school, sure. It's uh, you know they've grown, and uh, and the meatballs were unbelievable, and the whales, and the it was just National Geographic. How cool! Ma- Mako sharks jumping everywhere, and it was it was pretty. What cool. What an exciting time! Yeah. What was the size of the Dorado? Would you say? You said they were bigger. You know, like what? Were... You know, at least you know a small one was 15 pounds. No and, you know, kidding. And there's lots of. 25s and 30s and wow. then a few Crazy. 40s and 50s around. Unreal. Yeah, some of the 50s would come in like a missile on your teaser and just pull your whole gear under, and you're just cringing, <laughs> waiting for your outrigger to break, and you're just like, oh, let go, let go. It was gnarly. You were saying uh, marlin fishing wise when you guys were trolling that you couldn't you couldn't even think about trolling lures that had hooks in them. Yeah, absolutely not. You would just be you would be chasing you would be winding in and shaking off the auto the entire trip. Yeah. So I mean, it was so bad that. <clears throat> so so what do you do? What 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 is the alternative? You know, if somebody's sitting there going, "Well, what do you mean you you don't put hooks in them? What what does that mean? And what do you do? And what you know, what is that just, scenario?" We're trolling two squid chain teasers and okay. and had uh, we had these uh, nice rubber rubberized uh, baits. Okay, and they would get pants and skirt skirted so fast that. Like we a had, calico bass we pulling, start, pulling down right? swimming on a lead head. We had to start pulling out old marlin lures and putting them on because <laughs> ones that we didn't like because they were ruined by the end of the day. <laughs> just shredded. Just, I, I shredded and I peeled. I should have brought one to show you. It was unbelievable. Teeth mark, bill marks, no rubber left on the skirt, just bad. And these That's still have crazy. no hooks in them. And you're just, no hooks. You're just, just piling The Dorado on. were piling all over it and jumping around. You're just waiting for a marlin to come up and bat the thing around. Yeah. And then when you see one, then you'll slide a bait back to him and hopefully catch right. him. Yeah, if so, a Dorado doesn't beat him to it and eat, eat so that. So when it, when it was mixed uh, fishing, when there was marlin and, and Dorado in the spread, you would see the marlin would come up and we'd say, okay, marlin, marlin, and you would be teasing the fish to the boat, and you could see four or five Dorado hanging out right on the next, next to the marlin, just right <laughs> next to him. <laughs> Get out of here! And a guy would drop a bait back, and the, you know, ninety percent of the time the Dorado would beat just race beat over him to the. You're you know, watching oh, it all happen. Watch it. Oh, crystal yeah. clear, the tower, beautiful mag watching bay. down. I'm like, ah, oh, it's full of Dorado. Don't drop a bait back. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, Dorado, don't, just forget it. Forget it. You know, the Dorado's going to beat the Marlins. When the Jimmy Kingsman yeah. is saying that there's more Dorado than he's ever that? seen. What That's a fun deal. And uh, you just don't worry about it because you know you got four more schools up in front of you. You're going yeah. no, to just... bump into another one. Yeah, you're going to bump into another one in another 15 minutes. Let's not worry about it. Yeah, the first day we kind of mixed it up, figured it out. Of course. And, and, and then the next two days we were able to find some schools that were just Marlin. And it was a great time. How with. fun. Raising 100 fish a day, 50 to 100 fish a day, depending on the day. Wow. Sounds epic. That's cool. It was good. You That's know, great. It's, you've, we've seen it better, but, it, you know, the marlin fishing was really good. That's cool. How how does that tool work? That, like, you know, how, how does having your gyros, you know, how do you use it there versus when you're fishing at home, Southern California? Like, what are the differences? Like, how does it has it change? Are you looking for anything different? Are you solely looking for birds and fish and bait or condition or like is it you know like um i think what i'm trying to ask is it how how does things change when you're going south you know you fish a lot here local you've done a lot of local marlin fishing obviously you do a ton when you're running the boat south does does how you use your gyros change are you looking for things different or, or are things always the same when you're on the water uh, i mean it's pretty similar this trip was a little bit unique because of the dorado scenario and there was uh quite a bit of of tailors and stuff, and they actually bit and a few sleepers and stuff, which normally they, like the last couple of years at the finger bank, you see a hundred tailors and you can bait them all and none of them bite. Really? And then as soon as the light switch turns on at about 10 o'clock in the morning, then everything comes up behind the boat or you're baiting a, hmm. a bird school okay. feeder. But this year we were finding a handful of tailors here and there and, and they were biting. They were biting. We were okay. catching them, yeah. Okay. Um, that's Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Now, you have uh, Fraser. You talked about it last time. Gyro, gyrobinos. dot com. There's two styles of binoculars that are available, you know, to purchase from those guys. Can you give us a kind of a rundown on what what exists, what it does, what you like, you know, what what you use? What's the what's the kind of latest and greatest when it comes to using these gyro binoculars? Yeah. So what we've been using is the 
<clears throat> for the last 25 years is the Mariner, and that is what we call now call the M25E. Okay. And so we, about five or six years ago, we stopped getting the ability to get frames for that device. And so now they're all refurbished. And the, so what we did was is when they built the new unit, the S250, um, the military made a deal with Fraser Optics to buy back a whole bunch of military version, the same frame as what we used to build the Mariner off okay. of. And it was, and so now it's an e, M25E, and they refurbished those. They get them back from the military, put a new motor in it, new objective lens. So the lenses on the military version are have some laser coating that's not oh, we're not allowed to sell to the okay. public so they've got to change objective lenses so they have new objective lens new motor and they put a new boot on it and clean it up and looks basically brand new and they and that's what we call the you know the m25e so refurbished doesn't mean an old motor and old glass it just means it had a frame that was already done but they put brand new guts inside of it per, correct like the work the working running gear parts that's all brand new yes it's just on an old frame and it's only on an old frame because you can't get that frame anymore that's correct it's like buying a classic pickup truck you're only using the frame and putting all brand new parts inside of it. right yeah everything the only thing that's not new in them is a uh, the motherboard okay and the the device used to be able to do uh, night vision and sure. other applications all kinds of things that and we so, don't get to have yeah and so it's the the motherboard is the only part that's not new mm-hmm. and that has some failure rate and sure uh, but everything else is is new got it so now that's the that's the refurb that's the but, refurb but then on the other side of it there is the the brand brand new, and yeah. that's the S250. Yes, the S250. So about 12 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, the uh, they came out with a bi-light, and they tried to make a gyro that was super light for the soldier to carry. It's not as heavy. And that was a lot of plastic. They went to a single one, CR123 lithium battery as opposed to two AA batteries, and that unit was out for several years and it was and it doesn't have a motherboard the cage and uncaged lever is mechanical physically your thumb does the work it's not a, a solenoid as in the M25e mm-hmm. and so they uh military wanted some changes and that when they wanted changes to the bylight that was when they developed the S250 which is the newest version now okay and that was how that deal came in where they bought back all the refurb is got units. it okay cool so they bought all the frames that the military they have like a thousand frames Great. and it makes it available to us it makes mean, it available to us it's yeah. perfect it, yeah. it's working out and so but the the s250 is a, a little bit lighter it's a little bit heavier than the bylight because it's okay. got some aluminum machine parts that were otherwise used to be plastic uh-huh. so they weren't so worried about the weight anymore so you've got the m25e the originals that's the heaviest and then this one's a few ounces lighter, and then the bylight was a few ounces lighter than that. Okay. However, for fishing guys, especially SoCal, where you're in the glasses a long periods of time, um, the the M25E is more comfortable. It's like longer. Yeah. And with the way you hold it, and you put the ice shield on it, and it stays against your face, I can hold it a lot longer than I can hold the S250. S250, you kind of got to press it against your face with your biceps, and it's mo- it's just more physically demanding to hold it for long periods of time. What you look through as the person holding them, and, and you know, and seeing the stabilization that that motor gives you, I. I'm still convinced that what you what you use the most and become the most comfortable with becomes what you will swear is the best of them. And the reason I say that is my boat partner and I each have a pair, but we have different <clears throat> different glasses. I have what now is called the M235, what then was the Mariners. He has a pair of Bylights. Neither of us can even stand using the other person's pair. Like, I've looked through mine for, you know, 10 years now, and I swear to you, like, they, they, you know, they mold into my hand and my face, and I know exactly how and where to hold them, and it's like I'm, it's like I'm not holding them. It's just an extension of my eyes, and Neil is exactly the same way with his bylights. You know, mine, he, you know, he's like, ah, oh, I gotta open my hands too wide to hold yours, and they're, they're too heavy, and they're less comfortable. Like, but because he's got thousands of hours looking 
through his by lights and they're you know the image that you're looking through it's basically the same you know it's so good that you just become you know they just become an extension of you and I love my larger pair again that 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 m twenty five e i I love them and so if a person asks me, I always tell them that, but really it's just because that's what I'm used to if you ask Neil, he would tell every person like oh you got to get that s two fifty they're the they're the they're the they're the light ones they're the most comfortable ones and and so Rick, yours are only a, a few ounces heavier I mean is that right the that's the it. m yeah versus the byline yep. I I always thought that the it's not enough weight that it makes a world of difference, and I always figured that that little bit of extra weight kind of helps you steady them a little bit. Like they don't, you know, it's like uh, if uh, if something is sitting on the table and it's bouncing around in a car, something heavy is going to stay there, and something real light is going to bounce around a little bit more. And like you just you're just able to steady. I'm sure you're holding a little more weight, but I think that a little more weight helps me steady them a little and, bit more. And and. The optics are the same. I mean, they're is ident- it they're identical? Identical. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Same. Same everything. Yeah. I love. I it. I, I, I love the information. Yeah. I love learning. Mm-hmm. And for a skiff guy, I mean, that's what better of a useful tool other than a sonar, right? I mean, in conjunction, if yeah. you were able to have one, but. But, right? I, I mean, I, I would say yeah. I mean, the the sonar is the tool that everybody says. Well, that's the one that's just as good. I I, I mean. I would take a pair of gyro if if you're forced to have one. You take gyros over the sonar. I mean, again, yeah. you just look at look at effective use. But, you know but what there's I mean? a like, reason. I, I know this. Yeah. Booger, Booger comes on here. We have seven pair on the boat. Yeah. Mike from the Tribute comes on. We've got five to seven pairs on the boat. And, you know, I mean, Brian Kiara comes on. Like we cannot live without. No, you can't. It's just. It's it's a part of the fabric. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can you just don't miss them, and you get guys that are good at looking through them. You just don't miss anything. It, yeah, they're no, cool. Absolutely, I agree. I, I, and then the weight to me, I like better myself. But uh, yeah, I mean the main the main difference is that that battery, um, the two double A's versus the lithium, and then the and the eyepieces actually on the S two fifty are larger diameter, and so we have a hard time putting the. Uh, the rubber eye shields on. Okay. And the rubber eye shields are a huge benefit for for when you're lo- do looking for long periods of time. Okay. I, I, you know, and again, I say the same thing. Like mine take double A, so I love it. I say the same. But Neil's like, what, who, who cares? You go on, I go on Amazon and I order a hundred at a time, yep. and it's last it lasts me multiple years. You know, like so what? You know, it's just their batteries aren't hard to get. Like uh, I, I'm lazy, and I keep my boat at Dana Landing, and every morning when we go to the boat, I order my breakfast sandwich and my lunch sandwich, and I can grab a pair of double A's, and like I can get all this stuff when I go. Yep. And he orders a hundred batteries. Batteries at the beginning of the year, and two years later, when it's down to 25 of them, you're going to get a few more. It's just yeah. not it's not a difficult thing these days. You no. know, like you can get anything you need. Yeah. What's the runtime like on on the 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 glasses? Would you say so? The the two double A's tend to last a little longer, about 12 hours, full dawn to dark, mm-hmm. run them all day long, and the lithium's probably about 10 hours. Okay, and it's the and it's just a little different application in that. The double A's will run low, and you'll start going, ah, at the end of the day, my image isn't great. You know, it's kind of wobbly. And Whereas the lithiums, <clears throat> they'll just shut off. Oh, okay. They just go to a... Like it, it, it goes per- strong until... It goes it, strong, 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 and then dead. It's full throttle like, to oh. off. <laughs> okay, like, you can go, oh, I don't have any more batteries. I got my double A's. And you're like, just kind of, oh, it's, uh, I still got it, but I, can, I have one hour left in the day. <laughs> That's funny. But lithiums, you're done. That's cool. It's over. Oh, well, as man. you can hear, man, we got a great show, Corey. Today. Nobody knows more about this stuff than the guy sitting next to us. I, I completely agree with you. I mean, talking uh, gyro binos and uh, all this cool Baja stuff we've been hearing about and just uh didn't even talk about the free diving stuff you know the uh all the marlin and dorado and oh that was that was amazing that's kind of the highlight <laughs> back in i took my skiff down in 1995 to mag yeah. bay talked to lasley and he says yeah you got to come down and da-da. i'm a young guy and go down there with two of us and we go 20 miles off the beach in a 20 foot center council blackman not a boat anywhere in sight there's 10 frigate schools around us and we're tired of reeling on them like Ugh, i can't reel on another fish we're like hey let's go swimming with these things let's just jump in and check them out we jumped in and checked them out and it was that was life-changing bet. and that's my biggest thing now when i do mag bay trips is sharing that experience with my guests how cool and getting them in the water and, it, and it's 
and everything's a timing thing and it's not every year that you can do it Mm -hmm. you know if the meatballs are not stationary and ten, and they tend not to be when there's other ma- you know there's mammals on it and there's whales. dorado on it yeah the whales were are a problem cuz they really push around the meatball but when it's straight marlin the marlin well, you know there'll be about 40 20 to 40 fish in a school and it'll get the meatball and and so there's like sentry fish there's you know the bulk of the marlin are under the meatball and corralling it and keeping it contained so it can't run away and then there's maybe two to four fish that are physically chipping at the really? meatball and they'll take turns so it'll be the guy will come up he'll feed on the meatball and then he'll go back in formation and be one of those sentry fish and then the and then a new guy will pull off this, and he'll start picking off the pile. How and, crazy! And that, this was stuff that, when there's no other stuff on yeah. it, that meatball will be 20 foot around in the morning, and by the end of the day, it's about two foot around. Wow! Crazy eat stuff. It, those 20 to 40 marlin will eat the entire meatball, and they just won't let it. They won't let it go they away. Never let it down. Keep it know, and the whole we'll time. go in swim, and and we'll see. Sometimes the the meatball will get kind of broken up with. Uh, with one of the two or four fish that's in it yeah. physically, and they'll bifurcate, and the school will go into twos, and then that one smaller piece will try to make a mad dash to the deep. And then it the, doesn't happen. And then the, those two guys are, you know, two to four fish are up, and they stay with it, and then the sentry fish just race down, get underneath it, and force it right Keep back. Keep it up. Get <laughs> out of here. How it's cool. Super cool experience. And, and you know, there, there's catching on a lot of the ponga fleets in yeah. mag bay they're doing that stuff where the pongas are running around and people just jump in the water yeah and, and it's and it's all free diving it's all yeah, it you snorkel around get your gopro it's unbelievable how cool Crazy. is that man we've got some really fun uh, stuff ahead of us having jimmy captain jimmy king's mill in studio super cool you want to join us two ways to do it as usual uh the phone line Couple open lines right now. It's all yours if you want to give us a call at 213-432-1090 or you can text us via the app. You definitely want to make sure that you uh, leave your uh, name and telephone number or contact info right there because at the end of the show, Jimmy's going to flip a coin and one lucky caller or one lucky texter is going to win a $300 gift certificate to CoastSunglasses.com. Man, what a cool, oh, like, like a day of optics here, today's right? Today's all about taking care of the eyeballs. I know. Sure. Hey, we're going to be right back and let's talk hook up with jimmy king's mill when we return on let's talk hook up app the mightier 1090 espn radio are you passionate about fishing and the great outdoors but not quite sure where to go look no further than queen charlotte safaris in pristine british columbia canada hello this is valerie Hopridge. there's so many reasons to join us on your next fishing adventure a few of the highlights are fishing in protected calm waters very important quality chinook salmon run all season long after you've caught your salmon we're going to go out for the great pacific halibut lean cod rockfish and dungeness crab our beautiful lodge overlooks shingle bay and Sandspit, and it's so easy to get to. Fly from almost any airport into Vancouver and then on to Sandspit. Fish processing, your fishing license, your gear, all included. Just bring that fishing arm and that smile. Let our chef pamper you with amazing meals while our staff gives you wonderful hospitality, all included in your Queen Charlotte Safari's package. Give me a call on our toll-free number, 1-877-815-2892, or go to our website, qcsafaris.com. Season long range fishermen know that the Red Rooster 3 is the finest fishing vessels in terms of technology, design, speed, comfort, and safety. This 105 foot sport fishing yacht meets every demand for comfort while delivering an unforgettable fishing vacation. Captain Andy Kate and crew are experienced, friendly, and sincere in their desire to help you have the trip of a lifetime. Book a trip on the Red Rooster 3 and you'll be back. Trips go fast. So check redrooster3.com or call Lee Palm Sport Fisheries at 619 224 3857. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. 
The lighter the bite and the cleaner the water means one thing. We need a thinner leader for more natural presentations. That's where Seaguar Gold Label Leader Material shines. It's Seaguar's thinnest leader material yet. That means it's even less visible underwater and creates more natural presentations for better catch rates on leader-shy fish. With exceptional knot and tinsel strength, this advanced leader material is now available from 2-pound test for fishing trout in the Sierra to 80-pound test for big yellowfin in Guadalupe. Get Seaguar Gold Label at your favorite tackle dealer or learn more at Seaguar.com. Hey, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup and having Jimmy King's Mill in studio. Super cool, talking all this cool stuff and cool Baja stories and just uh, talking uh, gyro binos, man. One of the most useful uh, tools, not only for the uh, skiff guy, the yacht guy, or you, shoot, it's our whole business, right? I mean, the whole sport boat industry. You want to join us, two ways to do it, 213-432-1090, or you can text us via the app. Make sure you do leave your uh, name and telephone number because at the end of the show we're going to have jimmy flip a coin and giving away a 300 dollar costa sunglass gift certificate man I, I say it all the time i think it's the most important fish finding tool you can have on the boat and i think it's an invaluable thing and i know they're a lot of money but man it is so worth the investment if somebody does want to go down that road jim what's the best way to get them like you know you can you can get them from different sources but they're you know there's there and there's several out there but you you know the you know the the ones from Fraser are what I've used so trouble free forever and like they're they're what I tell everybody they're my favorite like how do you go about getting them uh, so there's two ways to get them you can get them from me at gyropros.com or you can go direct to the factory which is in Pennsylvania and that's gyrobinos.com and it's the same price either way and uh, if you want them faster and you're a California person, you know, get them from me. We get, you know, if you're local, it'll get out in a day. Same, same price, same deal, same, same everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were talking to Krista before the show started and you guys have a couple of pair in stock on hand. Like if somebody wanted the most all time Christmas gift for somebody right now, you could literally have a pair. You could have a pair next week. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's kind of, I mean, we, in years past, it's always been some kind of drama where we can't get units this time of year, and wives call us and say, oh, I'm, I'm sure my husband. I mean, we've literally delivered units on Christmas Eve. That's rad. Wow. That's we're like, cool, Come on. you guys. I mean, it happens every year, yeah. uh, and this is unusual that we have stock, and so that's great. You know, our, our uh, guys are getting caught up back there. It's been a struggle to get material, parts, motors, you name it, yellow boots, all that stuff has been... Brutal, and yeah. we're finally getting caught up. And uh, the people at Jarobanos, they're awesome people. They've been doing it forever. One guy's been there for, I don't know, forty years. Crazy. Unreal. And to- Tony's been there. I think he, I think he's in his forties, and he's been there twenty. <laughs> Incredible. <years. laughs> That's and, cool. Uh, Super cool. Yelena, and they're just, they've been there forever. They're doing the same stuff. It's awesome. They're pros. And, and so they don't only take care of the public, like yourself, myself, Rick. They take care of the military. Like that's. Yeah, well, not anymore. No. Yeah, okay. not anymore. So it's just us. The, wow. The beauty is, though, like we're using a military grade product. Yep. And they, they built them to withstand things that we, they built them to withstand things that are so much gnarlier than what we put them through. And, yep. you know, you, you've always. Always talked about that they have to go through drop tests and yep. water tests and you know like those those pair of mariners that I have float and you know Jim had joked about like man if those things are going to fall out of the tower kick them all the way out to the side and have them float because if they if they go in the water they're just going to float around just drive around back That's around right. and pick them back up again That's right. yep we've like, had that happen before they they're they're, <laughs> they're just they're built to you know they're built to, they're built to deal with what the military throws at them so yep. fishing on a skiff all day they can they can hang yeah they uh, like one of the tests. Uh, that they used to do was uh, they take they had they had to display for a military person to come in and inspect them. They'd have to take 50 units and lay them out on a table, and the guy would be able to pick any of the 50 at random. At random, and they'd have to run them, turn them on, whether while they're caged, and he would they'd have to drop them from 18 inches onto oh. cement floor covered by a three quarter inch. Uh, piece of plywood wow so it was plywood laying on cement and they drop it 18 inches they had to drop it four times and it had to survive right and otherwise they didn't pass i like baby my glasses so much over the years you know but like but again i mean i i can attest like my mine don't live 
in a in a holster on a 65 footer with a gyro that goes 10 knots all the time. Mine live on a 25 foot Parker that gets bounced around all the time. That like kind of yeah, like sort of right. They get thrown on <laughs> top of the center console and get and then and then slide off of the the leaning post and and hit the deck and and we see a bird school and they get chucked inside the center console and hopefully they land on the bean bag and they have lived that life for over 10 years and the number of times they have seen service is still sitting at zero that's oh, crazy that's rick great. they're perfect yeah no, I, that's awesome I, you know, I, I clean them i take the batteries out of them i put new batteries into them i turn them back on and they work as good today as the first day that i bought them that's crazy i mean jimmy is that i mean that can't be typical but it's, i mean it's random you know we yeah we have Units that tend to be like super good out of the box, and you never see them, never hear from them again. And then you'll get a device that's not right, and it's been back two or three times, and the customer gets frustrated. and And I get it. Sure. But it's a little bit of a roll of dice. But there's people that have called me 20 years later and say, "Hey, uh, can you can I still get a rubber boot for this thing? It's a little bit wore out." And I'm like, "Yeah, hey, how they're 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 running great." And, I've asked Jim now. This is like the third time. Like, hey man, I'm at I'm at five years. Should I send this thing in for service? Just he said, no, don't touch it. And then you know, seven years. Like, hey man, should I? It's been seven years. Should I send this thing in for service? No man, don't touch it. Like, yeah. well, I'm at ten years now. Like, should I service thing? No man, don't touch it. Just yeah. put batteries into it, and it works great. It works yeah. as good today as it did the first day. I have Albacore guys up north that um, that fish 260 days a year, and and they get you know. They have some units they'll redo every three years, and other units that they've been using for 260 days a year for Four 10 years, years and, crazy. and they haven't serviced them. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Like, hey, shouldn't I service them? There's like 8 billion hours on them. Like, if they're working, if your image is good, don't, don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. If, there's, if it's loud and it bugs you, but the image is perfect, don't touch turn the radio it. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah turn no, your sonar up. Turn the radio on. Whatever. Some some are noisier than others. It's you know it's yeah seventeen thousand RPMs or something. I mean it's ridiculous. Unbelievable. Speed, just zipping in there. That's cool. Well, the phone lines Crazy. are absolutely packed up. The techs are completely loaded. Hey, uh, earlier we were talking about Dana Landing, and uh, I want to remind you, a very cool event coming up on November 25th. Dana Landing is going to be hosting the 24th Annual Halibut Classic Tournament. This is a really fun, family-friendly, and very inexpensive tournament. It's only $60 per angler. You can have up to five anglers on the same boat. There's side jackpots from $20 to $100 per boat. They're going to raffle off some really nice prizes all day long as part of your entry. Um, there's a banquet that's on Saturday afternoon after the fishing. Uh, Dana Landing's going to serve food and award the prizes and cash winnings. It's just a really fun day. Uh, last year's winner took home over five grand. Wow. Uh, you can get all the info about the tournament and pay for the entry fee and side jackpots, all available online at halibutclassicsd.com. It's a really cool event. <clears throat> and when they said it's family friendly, it's totally that. It's a fun group event, not too serious. Everybody gets together. It's a fun start. Really mellow. A a great thing to do and you know if you got family in town fun thanksgiving day holiday we're supposed to have some nice weather super fun tournament to do you can get everybody on the same boat together not a ton of dough it's a really really good time i think we're in a hell of a cycle too totally yeah like there's, there's a lot of yeah. fish around they're going to see a lot of bites it's a it's a really it's a really good time and i've said sure. this in the past if johnny and steve pinard are involved with the crew there it's legit exactly yeah, yeah those guys done do, they do everything right no doubt about it well the phones are literally packed solid Corey. let's jump into them let's do it how about uh, Chuck, Chuck calling from Dana Point. Good morning, Chuck. Appreciate you joining us. Oh, hey, great day, man. Uh, we're all rained out, and we get to listen to you guys. The greatest show on earth here. Um, now, these gyros, they, you should put a side kick on them if they're the ultimate side um, sonar. I mean, they outreach the sonars are miles, but what a game changer, <laughs> huh? They do. You know, um, and then the diving thing. I saw some photos when the fish get used to you. These guys are hand feeding like four hundred pounders. Do you guys see that thing? Crazy. Haven't have, have, have you, Jimmy? No. Four hundred pound. Yeah. Are you just talking about like the East Coast big blue fins? Yeah, yeah, East Coast guys down there hand oh. feeding them. Crazy. Yeah, it's, Check that's the photo cool footage, out. All like the, the things PEI, way bigger than him. 
Yeah, yeah. That, that's cool. Yeah, pretty, pretty exciting stuff for sure. Well, Chuck, appreciate the call very much, man. Thanks for getting us rolling this morning. Hey, good text came through. Uh, this one says, good morning, boys. Uh, Jim, great show. Love hearing all these awesome stories. My question is if you could explain some of the difference. I'm definitely wanting to invest in a pair of binoculars for this year, and I've been trying to decide over getting the hump between the difference of a pair of Fujinon Techno Stabies at 1200 or making the jump at a pair of Frasers at four grand. What is my worth? Worth of dollar difference getting that's from Jay in Ocean Beach. So the biggest difference is um, the Techno Stabby has like kind of like what it says. There's a technical, uh, or should I say, a mechan- uh, electronic stabilization doubled with this little tiny uh, gyro in it, and it uh, it just doesn't stabilize. It doesn't take up the inertia that a full mechanical gyro can do. It's better than nothing. Sure. Um, it has four AA batteries. It it wears out in about six hours, and you're burning through eight out, you know, eight AA batteries in a day. Um, the, the eyepieces are hard, and like they will just drive your. Uh, it's just not the same. I mean, if yeah. you want the the two devices that you want to compare uh, with is uh, is a Fujinon Stabby Scope, uh, a Fraser. S250 or a refurbished M25E. Those are the three sets of a real gyro uh, and kind of the difference. The the Fujinon is a really great product. A lot of the sport boat guys use them. <clears throat> and what it does, it has four AA batteries. It's a real gyro. It uh, it will it has a what they call a single access point, a single uh, pivot point where. It will stabilize better because it has a bigger motor. It will stabilize some of the bump, but it has the scan rate is terrible. It's super, super slow. So the guys on the big, you know, slow moving cattle boats, they can actually see farther with, uh, with the Fujinons than the Frasers. They stabilize better, but you can't scan them side to side. So like if you're in a skiff and they're really tough in a skiff. Yeah. If you're in a formidable boat, the Fujinon, and you're not moving, you're not scanning, and so, and it becomes with the professional guys, it's a personal preference. The Frasers have two access points where each prism is on its own access point, so the image doesn't bend. So when you scan on a Fujinon, the image starts bending and it goes choo, 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 and it's ticking in your in your eye, and you can't see a damn thing if you try to scan side to side. Whereas the Fraser is doesn't have as big a motor, so it has you know less battery power, lasts longer on two AA batteries and a much, much faster scan rate. So, so you're able to turn left and right and, yes. and have it follow you. Yes. Like, you yes. Know. So it's, I mean, kind of, you know, the tuna guys, the faster scan rate to me is I like a lot better. Um, the long range guys, they're, you know, looking really far, as far as they can on those huge cattle boats. But a much more stable platform, too. So, it's a and, much more stable platform. And being on a skiff. And it's a, it's an apple and an orange. It's like yeah, what exactly. you talked about, a Biolite versus the M25E yeah. versus uh, the Fujinon Scabiscope. And a skiff, there is no question. You know, there for me, like in my opinion, the, the Fraser is where it's at. And for exactly what, what Jimmy's saying, like the, to be able to, that, that's, that's what our game is. We don't have, we don't have a big tower. We don't have a big stable boat. We don't have a gyro in the boat that keeps us steady. We run, we stop, we glass. 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 That, that's how we find our fish. We, we, we run for a mile and, Neil and I will both scan both directions all the way around the boat, and I see this, I see these birds, I see this current, I see whatever, and we're, we're, we go in that direction. You know, we go where the sign is pointing us, and you keep connecting the dots until those dots put you on what you're looking for. And and you know, you're t- two people burning gyros. You know, every couple of miles, you're going to start picking it away, wh- whether it's. These birds are flying this direction. The current rip is going this direction. The kelps are going that way. Whatever, it, whatever it might be, but being able to scan and sweep back and forth fast on a boat like mine is the difference. Like we yeah. don't, I don't have a steady cockpit to to pick apart the needle in a haystack. Like the the Frasers are, are it. I, I I love them. Yeah, I mean it's and it's your budget too because the the Fujinons, the good Fujinons are six thousand bucks. The S two fifties five thousand bucks, and the refurbs are thirty six hundred bucks. And and those are the real deal that's really all there is 
if you want the real deal. Yeah, totally. And I think you said it best. The the twelve hundred dollar pair is better than nothing, yes. but it 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 does not offer you what a real pair of gyros does. No, it's better. It's better than not, but it's not the it's not the same thing. It's not the you, same thing. You know, you you can tow you can tow something heavy with a real small pickup truck, but you can't stop it and you can't pull it up the lawn ramp and you you can't do it right. And this is doing it right. Yeah, you know, you know and and being a skiff guy, I mean, there's this seems like nothing more important to me than be able to pan left and right and. I, I mean that that's your whole game, right? I mean, well, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's an inform it's an instant information gathering tool. It's not even like you can It's not fish finding. It's information yeah, that's finding. That's a way right. better way to put it for um, sure. It's uh, like Rick mentioned. I mean, the birds, the kelps, or you, whatever you might be looking at. That's it's pointing in the direction. When you're when you're the driver of the boat and you don't know where to drive, you need that instant information. It's it's instant. You can just like, hey, I'm going to look this way, and they're like, oh, it's too rough going around the corner. I'm going to stay in the lee of the island, you know, because you can see the wind line six miles away. Crazy. It's the yeah. It's there's nothing like it. The real no deal. Doubt. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's uh, jump back into the phones, Corey. Let's do it. How about Jerry? Jerry calling from Dana Point. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing, Jim? It's good to hear from you. Glad you feel the light. Hey, the reason I called was that I remember your trip to Bag Bay. You came in and uh, took photos on our device that uh, we had on like a uh, 16 millimeter type of uh, movie. And I uh, was wondering if you still had those Polaroid photos and uh, how often do you get down there to fish Bag Bay? Uh, we're, you know, we're going down every year, every fall. We, we go down and, and, uh, deliver the boat. Um, the owner of the boat has a, uh, a slip there in, uh, at Costa Palmas, a new marina in the East Cape. And we just, uh, dropped it off there and there's a bad, bad forecast of wind this week. So I ended up coming home and uh, we'll go back down when the weather, uh, gets better but the uh i'm trying to remember what you're talking about on the on the mag bay photos where where did you see those uh you brought them to my department and then uh you and your wife myself and a couple other people uh were looking at your photos and we captured the photos on a uh, polaroid device Oh man, that would have been really long time ago. I mean, you're talking that was 95 when I did that. That was the the That's Polaroid right. image. That was it was like a, a, a in 95 I brought down a a uh, a disc camera. Does anybody remember those? Yeah, I had yeah. a waterproof disc camera. Well, my and parents I, talked about those. Yeah. And I did have some it, you know, it was unbelievable. I mean, back then when I'd never heard of anybody swimming with us thing things and it was it was unreal that's cool and, and that was the only way we had to capture and prove that hey yeah look check this out check this out it was cool <laughs> and I, I mean now it's a gopro and i'm just dying to get this gopro footage that we just made i can't, I can't wait to get it it was really cool stuff oh so i gotta figure out how to post this stuff somehow <laughs> on, on my site i don't i don't do any of that kind of stuff I have to consult the kids. I have to, yeah, I have to <laughs> consult somebody how to do it. But it, it's the Dorado and the meatballs and, That's the, so and cool. the bait balls gluing under the boat. And that is unreal. Awesome. Yeah, epic, man. Hey, what a great phone call. Appreciate yeah, it very much. Definitely a good one. Hey, we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Cookup, man. we got fish reports coming up, your calls, text, and more. When we return on Let's Talk Cookup app, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. End the year with powerful deals on new Yamaha outboards during Yamaha's Why Wait for Spring sales event. From now until December 15th, 2023, purchase a new eligible Yamaha 4 50 to 30 horsepower outboard and get up to seven years of warranty protection. Add a Siren 3 Pro package to your purchase of a 115 horsepower and up and receive a bonus $1,000 in dealer credit and half off your Siren subscription. Looking for lower horsepower? Yamaha's got you covered. Purchase a new Yamaha 25 2.5 horsepower outboard and receive up to $300 in dealer credit. Visit your local Yamaha dealer. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Offer ends December 15th, 2023. Subject to change. Other restrictions and conditions apply. Select models excluded. 24-month Yamaha extended service added to 36 or 60-month factory limited warranty. Choice offered to Florida residents is a 24-month Yamaha limited warranty. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. Cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. 
Your vacation bucket list can't be completed without visiting the Katmai Lodge, Alaska this summer. A world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. Get in the action fishing for all five species of Pacific salmon. King, sockeye, chum, coho, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout. Arctic grayling in Dolly Varden, both in the Alagnac and nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fly fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in, ensuring your days are fish filled while you enjoy freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, enjoy fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon. Delicious dinner prepared by the lodge's exceptional chef. Take a quick fly out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world renowned bear watching and check out our trout fishing specials at katmai.com. That's K A T M A I dot com. Katmai dot com. On your next fishing trip, you want to maximize your catching power by using the best jigs available. That's why you need Sea Falcon. These handmade Japan brand certified lures will take your fishing and catching to the next level. All Sea Falcon jigs and plugs are hand painted in Japan, utilizing the highest level of quality and attention to detail. Gamakatsu's premium assist hooks are ideal to pair with Sea Falcon lures. For knife jigs, short jigs, poppers, and plugs, Sea Falcon lures get it done. Check SeaFalconUSA.com. This is Art Taylor of Searcher Sport Fishing. Join Captain Mike Totter, Chef Josh Evans, as a new era begins for Searcher Sport Fishing. Mike and Josh will continue the legacy of excellent customer service, fantastic food, and an amazing crew. Book your fishing adventure now online at searchersportfishing.com or call Celia at 619-226-2403. searchersportfishing.com, 619-226-2403. I can't wait to spend some quality time with my son fishing this year, teaching him about casting, how to choose bait, set the hook, and how to be safe on the water by always wearing a life jacket. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. All right. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up and Rick. We're having so much fun in the studio with Jimmy Kingsmill, Captain Jimmy Kingsmill from Gyro Pros and uh, Gyro Binos and, and just having a good time talking good stuff. And you want to give us a shout? One open line right now, and it's all yours at 213-432-1090, or you can text us via the app and uh, having fun. Yeah, no doubt. Maybe win a brand new pair of Costa sunglasses. I uh, want to remind you, this portion of the show, if you like fishing for tuna and you're not using gamakatsu hooks, you are missing bites. The Nautilus Circle Hook comes in sizes as small as a number 4 all the way up to a 6 And for big fish, that Nautilus HD is tough on us, but not too oversized. They both come ringed or non-ringed. You can see your local dealers or check out gamakatsu.com. Also want to remind you a really cool um, opportunity coming up for a seminar in San Marcos at Turner. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of fun happening. Um, it's a, a, a wintertime surf fishing uh, uh, seminar with grubs and gulp and gamakatsu. Um, if you're interested in becoming a better surf angler this winter, you've got to attend one of Bill Varney's uh, surf seminars. Nobody does it better than Bill. Uh, this seminar is going to be on Wednesday, November 29th at Turner's in San Marcos. Bill's going to cover rod and reel combos, all the rigging, use of artificial baits like that gamakatsu Duracent, uh, using gulps, using grubs in the surf. There's no registration required. Bill seminars are totally free. Just be sure to get there early for a good seat. The seminar starts at 5.30, and you don't want to miss that great raffle. Again, that's at Turner's in San Marcos. It's going to be a great time. One more time, it's Wednesday, November the 29th at Turner's in San Marcos. Sounds like fun. No doubt about it. Yeah. Phone lines are packed. Everybody wants to talk to Jim. Let's jump back into him, Corey. Yeah, how about Rich? Rich Cohn from Bradley. Good morning, Rich. Appreciate you uh, joining us. What's up, Rich? Hey, good morning. You know, there's been a lot of advances in technology for things like drones, pocket calculators, and they talk about Moore's Law where semiconductors are constantly advancing and constantly shrinking. And I'm wondering if any of the – you guys have any line on the mad scientists that are maybe doing refinements or development or advancements or maybe even hard shifts for the technology for uh, gyro binoculars where they wouldn't even be a gy- gyro in the future where – It'll just completely change the game. Now, what do you see in going ahead, looking yes, forward? So, <clears throat> one of the one of the things that when Fraser did some uh, shifting around, they had some engineers, and I was able to talk to a couple of them. And one of the guys, one of the engineers, uh, has 
the technology, has it all laid out, has it all engineered, uh, where it'd be fully electronic. It would have range finders. It would have um, night vision, all the unbelievable all the stuff that you want to do. It it doesn't pencil out economically. There's okay. nobody that will support it. You can't sell enough of them. It's just too you much know, money. It's too much of a niche product. It's it's us. I mean, the little world yeah. of sport fishing globally. I mean, it's like this There's product, not enough of us willing to pay ten grand. No, to, no they're from everywhere. I get calls yeah. from you know New Zealand, Australia, sure. uh, every every you know awesome boat captain up and down the East Coast. They are hearing about it. They're learning it. They um, and there's just no substitute for it. But it's just a, such a small little market. You can you can't make your money back. It would cost so much to develop the the product. It it, it doesn't pencil out to build. Well, I'm glad you're the gyro pro because I didn't understand a word that Rich from Bradley said. I mean, I dug it, like I dug hearing it. But I'm glad we got the gyro pro in here because I didn't catch any of. Uh, yeah, no, it's of, there. The technology's part, there. There's the the money supporting sure. it. You can't sell enough of them. You know, they'd be ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and it would be very difficult to uh, get your money. They, anybody that would invest in it would take you know, 20 years to get their money back because they're just not going to do Crazy. it. Crazy. The only way it happens is a military thing and yes. the military advancement gets so far advanced that a pair of binoculars it was how this yeah. came to light. Sure. It was straight. The, the only reason we have this is because yes. this is the hand-me-down. It's the byproduct of yeah. mi- military use. Yeah. I mean, I mean the th- way. Think about the coolest things, the GPS. The... Well, this whole thing started with the fall of Russia in early 90, like 91 or whatever. And then in 93, a bunch of Russian military surplus, or should I say not Russian, but Soviet Union military surplus hit markets and there was a guy actually in Oceanside that was tugging on the beak's shoulder okay. and saying, "Hey, you got to try this gyro thing. It's unbelievable." Blah blah blah. And he's like, eh. "And then he, and I was his deckhand, and he's like, here, Jim, give give him to this guy. He'll play with him." And yeah, I got my seven by fifties. Don't worry about his. But we'll that's correct. We'll, we'll put these in the kid's hand. <clears throat> that's correct. And so we. Uh, we st- I started playing with them and it was like whoa these are unbelievable and it was uh, you know it was a Russian made product uh, called a Pelling and it was you know we bought them set for 500 bucks and or actually this first one was given to us and and it was game changing what we could see and uh, you know I was find a sleeper at the shotgun start of a money tournament and and I would scream at the at Beak stop you're gonna run it over and <laughs> Stops. Everybody's looking. Like we don't see anything. Oh, the bird just flew over the top of the sleeper. And like what? That bird three hundred yards up up the, up ahead? Yeah, it was crazy. What uh, we could see. Uh, game changing. Game changing. Uh, how? I was gonna say how in the very beginning did you overcome that? Because you're right. I mean, you you see things that you would swear you could pull the glasses down and touch it. And it's still a quarter mile away. You know, like, yeah, it's crazy. You know, and, and, and that's probably, I would say that's probably the biggest learning curve is, is getting a gauge for how far away something is, especially when the conditions are perfect. Bluebird day, sun is shining and lighting up the turn birds and they look good and the, the sun is on them and you can see the fish flashing underneath them and like, and you're fired up and you, you're locked on and you got them good. Like, explaining to somebody else how far away that is is probably one of the toughest learning curves about them because you can see things for a long way with your Frasers. Yes, no, it's and it's all, you know, pretty condition-based, lighting, glare, sunshine, blue water, gray water. Um, I'm actually going to, I got to, I've been meaning to do this for a long time, is just kind of a how-to seminar. Totally. And I'll post it on my site and, and we'll go from there. But, it, I mean, you could just, I could spend... Hours, a lifetime, talking to you about using the stuff. That's crazy, man. Some good info. We're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hook Up. You're listening to Southern California Sport Fishing Boys. Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hi, I'm Bart Hall, and I'm here to tell you about the 2024 Hall Family Shows. The first show is the Bart Hall Show at the Long Beach Convention Center, January 25th to the 28th. This is a new date for this world-famous show and California's largest outdoor recreation event. The second show is the Bart Hall Show at the Del Mar Fairgrounds, February 15th to the 18th. San Diego's biggest fishing show, biggest boat show, and biggest outdoor recreation event of the year. And finally, the Bart Hall Boat Show, March 
first, second, and third at the Fairplex in Pomona, California's premier boat show with acres of every kind of boat and marine accessory. We want to thank our sponsors, Progressive, Mammoth Lakes, Accurate Fishing Tackle, Convict Lake, Okuma Fishing Tackle, Ram and Jeep Vehicles, Shimano, Costa, Daiwa, the Southern California and San Diego County Ford Dealers, Turner's Outdoorsman, Fisherman's Landing, Bob Sands Fishing Tackle, John Petty, the Angler's Custom Goldsmith. We'll see you at the shows. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. We have always been the leader in fishing trips to Cedros Island. We have set the bar even higher with our second lodge opening for the 2022 season. Side-by-side lodges sitting on the cliff's edge with relaxing ocean views. With direct flights departing to the CBX in San Diego, we are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. Come check out the Yellowtail and Calico Bass Capital in the world. Nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. Call me at 619-772-7570 or check us out at cedrosportfishing.com. This is Bob Hoots at Costa Sunglasses. Visual signs are a critical part of my fishing program, from bay bass to bluefin. I wear Costas to see what's out there. Costas are built with advanced polarization technology with our 580 lens, designed to cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color to see more fish. Costa was founded by a group of anglers wanting a high-performance lens for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your adventures. CostaSunglasses.com. Finally, a rod designed for West Coast anglers. Shimano is proud to introduce the all-new Terramar West Coast Rod Series. These rods will deliver increased casting distance with heavy jigs and extra lifting power to conquer even the strongest game fish. Shimano built the Terramar West Coast Series utilizing TC4 blank construction with a double-layer core of advanced dynamic fibers wrapped in an inner and outer spiral of modulus graphite, making the rods virtually indestructible, yet crisp and lightweight. Durable Sea Guide guides adorn the Terramar West Coast Series, adding to weight reduction while enhancing the overall rod balance, giving you improved casting and fish fighting performance. The Shimano Terramar West Coast lineup contains rail rods, jig rigs, boat rods, and casting rods. From yellowtail to calico bass to yellowfin and bluefin tuna. Pick up a Shimano Terramar West Coast rod today at your local Shimano dealer. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. Spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range Voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. 